Hi everyone and welcome to part 4 of the Zanawa tutorial series. In this part, we will be continuing from where we left off in the last part and we will connect the sign-up screen to the endpoints that we created. Before we do that, I would like to set up two global variables to handle the auth token and the error message. So we will have an error message variable as an app variable. This will help us display an error message when a user has problem signing up or logging in. And we would also have a device variable called auth header, which would be saving the auth token that we receive from the Xano backend. So once we have created these two, we can close this. And now what we'll do is we will set up these text input fields to a respective variable so that we can send them in our post request. So we'll start by selecting name. Uh, this would be a controlled mode, and then we'll create a new screen variable. We can call it name value and save it. And we'll do the same things for email and password as well. We will create separate screen variables for those. So this would be an email value. And then the third one would be another new variable called password value. So once we have these saved, we can go to a button, the sign up button, and we will start by creating some request. So let's start with the first action. It will be an API action in which we will make a post call to our Xano API. Uh, we will select the sign up one and we can save the result as sign up response because this would be the response that Xano would be sending back once we make this request. And in the body, if you notice, uh, we would save these as password value. email value and then a name value and then we can X out of this uh, so our next action would be once this API request goes through we are saving the result as sign up response now from that response we would like to extract the outs token. So we would do an extract key. Uh, the input would be sign up response and the path name would be dot art token. And we can save this as a result as well to out token. So if the response has a out token field, we will extract that into a result name called out token. And then in case if there was an error, what we can also do is do another extract key option. It will have the same input. Uh, the path would be dot message. And we can save it result name as a message. So this would be only true if uh, there was an error message inside the API response. So our fourth action would be to set a global variable, our error message variable, in case there was an error. So we can use the set variable action here. And we will set the error message. And the new value would be error message. After that, we would have a conditional stop, which would be a fifth 
action here. So you can add a conditional stop. And you'll be checking the value of auth token. And then we can use the negate option. So if there was no auth token present, it will result in a true and uh, this conditional stop will be activated. So the user won't be able to navigate to or use the next actions in this list. So if everything went right, what we would do is we would set up the auth token. So we would use another set global variable. So we can do set variable. And in this case, we will be setting the auth header. Uh, the value would be auth token. And we would like to transform this with a bearer prefix. So what that does is basically adds the string bearer in front of your auth token. That is how we need to send it as a header to our Zano backend. So we can automatically do this from here. And then we can have one more field that would be a navigate option, which will navigate to our home screen. So we can test this out. And just enter some dummy values here. You say test, you know, it would be test at test.com, and then password would be. If I sign up, and there we go. So it was a successful sign up, and we were able to go to the home screen. Uh, another thing that we would like to do here is we can set this error text to a variable that would be our global variable for error message. In case there was an error, we would display that error here. So right now, since there was no error, you don't see anything. So let me try and see if we can get an error message here. I will leave the email field uh, with an error so we can see if, it, if we get an error back. Then we can add a password here. If I hit sign up, you can see we get an error back saying invalid email format. So basically, our sign up screen has been set up. Uh, the login screen has the same flow. I will try to go through that quickly and uh, show that in the next part. Hopefully you have understood uh, all the set of actions here. If you have any questions, you can always go into our doc section and take a look there. So if I go to button solid, maybe I'll just go over them once more. So we make an API request, we save the API request into a temporary variable. And then from that temporary variable, you'll either get an auth token or an error message. So we first try to extract the auth token and then the error message. We set an error message global variable from whatever response we get from error message. So in case there was no error message, the error message global variable would be set to an empty string. And then we will also do a conditional stop here to test if we got an auth token back. If there was no auth token, then this conditional stop would kick in and you won't be able to continue doing uh, going through this action chain. And if we had an auth token, we would set that as a global variable called auth header. We will add a bare prefix to it and then we would continue to our home page. Hopefully this all makes sense and I will meet you in the next part. Thank you.